In early November 2017, I flew to Barcelona to join Mayor Ada Calau in launching a new international initiative called The Shift. The Shift brings together stakeholders who believe housing is a human right, not a commodity. We had spent months planning this event. The Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights and an international network of cities had agreed to support the event. The night before the launch, I received a WhatsApp from the mayor's assistant saying that the leaders of the Catalan independence movement, all of them, had been arrested and were in jail, and maybe the mayor wouldn't make it to the launch of the shift. The next morning, I went to the palatial city hall in Barcelona, and I was led to this incredibly regal room. And there was nothing to do but sit and wait and hope that the mayor would show up. She had every reason not to, but I was hoping she would. Because the mayor and I believe that we are at a critical moment because of the incredible disruption to housing that's happened. Housing is now viewed as an asset, a commodity, a way to grow wealth. It's not viewed as a home, a place of warmth, security, where we grow our families and share memories and stories. But it hasn't always been this way. In the 60s and 70s, Housing was understood as a way to secure, to have security, personal security, but not to grow wealth. And governments were involved. They enacted legislation and policies. They wanted to create a diverse range of housing options for households of different income levels. So they made available home ownership, rental apartments, subsidized housing, public housing. Homelessness and unaffordability of housing that we see today barely existed, certainly not on today's scale. Now, I don't want to paint too rosy a picture, but I, I think housing really was viewed as a social good. And in that way, it was more closely aligned to housing as a human right, which is a place for all of us to live in dignity. Now, fast forward to 2018. Housing, or residential real estate, is now big business. In fact, it's the biggest business, amounting to $163 trillion, which is more than, the, it's more than double the total GDP of the entire world. And financial actors have invaded housing. Banks, pension funds, private equity firms, stockbrokers, shareholders, all of whom view housing as a place to park excess capital. And there is an abundance of excess capital. And what really worries me is that the private equity firms are preying on the misfortune and the financial ruin of families. Let me give you an example. Take Blackstone. It is the largest private equity firm in the world. They manage a hundred billion dollars of real estate. Blackstone has gone on a shopping spree. They've been buying up thousands and thousands of foreclosed homes in the US, Spain, Ireland, and the UK. They know that foreclosure creates this population that is still in need of housing. So they take these homes and they flip them and turn them into rentals. And sometimes they put them on the stock market. And the business model for Blackstone is that they have to keep increasing rents. Why? To satisfy their investor clients. 
to make sure those clients get a good return on their investment. And that means pushing out lower income households and moving in more affluent ones. It's clear to me that Blackstone has as their priority their investor clients and not tenants. And that's a problem because Blackstone owns 80,000 houses and is the largest landlord in the U.S. But the commodification of housing doesn't stop there. Billionaires, individuals of ultra-high net worth, are also parking their money in housing. Millions of houses that are investor-owned stand vacant around the world, with their owners having no intention of ever stepping foot inside. Meanwhile, 100 million people are homeless worldwide. And then there's Airbnb. Corporations and investors are buying up apartment buildings and units across cities, and they're converting them in, into short-term rentals for tourists. That takes away housing supply for longer-term rentals and local residents. And where are governments in all of this? Well, they have receded from the position that they had adopted in the 60s and 70s. In fact, they're closely aligned with investors. They subsidize home ownership. They give tax breaks to investors. They lure foreign investors into their countries by waiving golden visas and citizenship. They bail out banks and financial institutions. And they're selling off social housing stock. When governments do that, they also then just leave housing to the unregulated private sector. Now, the decision to divest housing of its social value and to support the commodification of housing is not just any policy decision. It is an attack, it's a rejection of their international human rights obligations. And it's having dire consequences. The relationship now between landlords and tenants is transactional. Corporations have no qualms raising rents to unreasonable letter levels and evicting tenants for minor matters. And the influx of capital into cities is escalating the cost of housing and skyrocketing housing prices mean that those who sustain cities are being pushed out. Nurses, garbage collectors, firefighters, police officers, baristas at your local Starbucks. When I was in Northern California, the area where all those high-tech firms are, many tenants came up to me and told me that their rents had doubled overnight, sending them into a kind of economic tailspin. I met people working at animation studios and in medical firms, living in tents on the sidewalk. And everywhere I go, every city I go to, I hear the same thing, whether it's Toronto or Vancouver, Sydney or Melbourne, London or Paris, Buenos Aires or Mexico City. If we want to restore human rights to people, we need a seismic shift. A shift where housing is valued as home, not equity. And where we invest in people, not capital. Surprisingly, the sector at the very center of financialization has taken a step toward this shift. The CEO of BlackRock, a rival to Blackstone, Larry Fink, recently wrote an open letter to the CEOs of major corporations, and in it he said,
Shareholder profit is not an end game. Corporations must do social good and must contribute in a positive way to society. I think Fink made some good points. But governments have a really important role to play too. They have to engage in this shift. A couple of years ago, national level governments did convene and they committed to ensuring access to adequate affordable housing for all by 2030. Now, it remains to be seen whether this is going to be a political commitment that's upheld or a broken promise. But speaking of political commitments and promises, let's go back to me sitting in Barcelona in this regal room wondering whether Mayor Calau was going to show up or not. I was having difficulty weighing these things. You know, the launch of the shift, the mayor's political allies in jail. What was going to be the priority? Well, Mayor Calau knew her priorities and she showed up. And she gave a rousing, passionate, eloquent, eloquent speech about the importance of the right to housing for people and for cities. And then she unveiled the Barcelona Manifesto, which asks cities around the world to form a network committed to housing as a human right and rejecting housing as a commodity. And it's at this city level where I am seeing some of the most impressive challenges to financialization. The city of Vancouver now has a vacant home tax, as does Paris. The city of London has a policy whereby any new buildings going up have to have a portion of affordable housing. Toronto is wrestling and trying to regulate Airbnb. A mayor in a small city in Chile stopped a luxury development because it was displacing local residents. Now you may think this is all too little, too late. But I think that these are incredibly important to stem the consequences, the disastrous consequences of financialization. You know, 1.6 billion people are living in grossly inadequate housing. This is unsustainable. I have seen people, including in affluent countries, US, Canada, Europe, living in informal settlements, in tents, in encampments, underneath highways and bridges and along railway tracks, in the harshest of conditions with no sanitation, no water, no toilets, no shower, no electricity. They are hanging by the thinnest thread. I have met mothers who have had to relinquish their children to the state because they can't afford adequate housing. I have seen children playing on heaps of garbage as if they are backyard trampolines. I have met people with disabilities living in darkened rooms at the back of a house or in homeless shelters or institutions because they and their families have no social supports. I have seen condos in the sky sell for $95 million. I have walked around ghost towns where investor capital has replaced people and homes. I have seen all of that and I have seen more. And I don't want to see it anymore. What I want to see is for us to think twice. To think twice before we assume homelessness is caused by individual failure rather than government and societal failure. To think twice before we book an Airbnb on our next vacation in a city that doesn't regulate them. 
to think twice before we decide to buy investment property and to think twice before we accept that governments leave housing to the unregulated private sector. What I'd like to see is for all of us, individuals, governments, corporations, to make the shift so that our actions, small or large, demonstrate our understanding that housing isn't a commodity, it's a human right. Thank you.